big damage on bosses, explosive visuals on AoE packs. People have called the mage the favorite blizzard child, the prodigal son, and it was all for a good reason, or reasons. Good performance, cool design, constant updates, and some of the most fun you can have in raids and dungeons. Woo! Yo, 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 yo. <laughs> Stop it. Get some help. Yo, look at the extra arcane orbs. Dude are but just a few things Arcane can offer you as a spec. The first time I ever played a mage was way back in Vanilla WoW when I made my human mage. The story of the Guardian of the Tyrus Fall, Medivh, and his impact on the invading orcs made me really think mages are cool as fuck. Learning magic from the Blood Elves, then known as High Elves, and using it to establish order, research, and quality of life improvements to Azeroth made mages a key important part of the world, which would come to be embodied by the class fantasy. Not to mention, Khadgar is, uh, was, a badass back in the day. And all of this coolness was focused around Arcane. Sure, Fire and Frost have really dope depictions in the game, with cool lore characters like Kael'thas and Jaina, on top of really dope gameplay and spec design, but Arcane always held a soft spot in my heart for feeling unique, for dealing with more abstract forms of magic in a video game, besides shooting the whatever colored magic your spec represents. It would take, however, almost 19 years for me to ever consider maining a mage, and the war within made that choice extremely easy for me. Just as how the choice of supporting us on Patreon can be easy for you, because there has to be a segue and it has to make sense. Listen, we do YouTube because we love it, and all of the support we get actually makes a difference. So we make sure to also make it worth it for the Patreons, with early access content and dope 4K wallpapers with your own character's transmog, among the few other perks. Check the link down below, it takes two seconds and you would be helping us a great deal. Thank you. Damage was never a reason for me to pick a main, not a sole reason in any case, although it did matter. Mage has always had top tier damage in at least one of its specs and I never mained one in the past at all. And now it's not topping any new meters lately, so... Not only that, but up until this expansion, Mage has been my least played class in the entire game. Yes, I mained Evoker before I ever touched the Mage, seriously. I know, I know, shame, shame. But I changed my mind when I played Fire and Arcane on the beta. Fire made me realize it was a spec for me, but Arcane made me realize I can also have crazy amounts of fun at the same time. Although it applies to both hero talents, the one I fell in love with was Spellslinger, which is convenient as it now is the best choice for performance as well. Playing Spellslinger has to be one of the most visually rich gameplay WoW has to offer. There are other specs that can stand out, like Elemental and Enhancement Shamans, Red Paladins, Diabolus Warlocks, but nothing gives you the visual dopamine like an Arcane Splinter Storm, launching all the splinters and triggering Arcane Orbs back to back to back. Not only is this a cool visual to enjoy, but the rotation feedback in AoE will make your brain go on a sugar rush if sugar would be an arcane charge damage and finishers into finishers. <sighs> The way Arcane plays, generally, and this is not a guide by the way, is that you want to build Arcane charges and then spend them. Spending them is where the big damage is at, so when you trigger the Splinter Storm and you can fire Barrage after Barrage, is basically if a rogue had infinite combo points and just uses finishers, or a Fury Warrior just using Rampage again and again. And the fun doesn't stop there. But before I go deeper into it, once again, this is not a guide on how to play, I actually recommend you check the Wowhead and Icy Veins guides, or even hop onto Preheat's channel since I learned a fair bit of Arcane from the man's videos. With that out of the way, another thing to discuss is difficulty, as this is an ongoing stigma with Arcane. Listen. Difficulty is subjective, so I cannot tell you if something is hard or easy. And don't listen to anybody that tries to criticize you for not being good enough to play something or coming at you with the bro-wow logic of, dude, this is so easy, what are you 
doing? I did 10 billion overall DPS in a plus 10 with my eyes closed and my grandma playing my spec. Everything is relative. I can say that Arcane is way simpler than it was in the past. Anything can get easier with practice and as a non-mage player myself, it took a few months for me to get used to the playstyle and however long it takes you, that is perfectly fine as long as you are having fun. At the end of the day, it's a video game and we always try to be better at them while enjoying the ride. That said, the playstyle is a lot more intuitive and smooth than in the past and it all revolves around clear casting now. Clear casting is a buff that procs when you consume mana, and when it's up, arcane missiles become available and you can channel them. In all builds, you will have the slipstream talent that lets you move while you channel the missiles and evocation on top, giving you the mobility you would otherwise lack from all the hard casting you will do. Once you cast your missiles, you will get the nether precision buff, buffing your next two arcane blasts or arcane barrages, but if you use this buff on arcane blasts, you will get another buff called ether vision that buffs arcane barrage and makes it refund arcane charges. At two stacks, your arcane barrage is essentially free. Both your talents benefit from playing nether precision properly for big damage, but also to enable their mechanic. If I could summarize arcane gameplay in as simple of a manner as possible, I would give you three rules to think about. One would be to never cast arcane missiles if you still have another precision buff you haven't consumed since you will lose it by replacing it with a new one. Two would be to never reach four stacks of clear casting, which, spoiler, you can't. The fourth one will always be lost, so try to cast your arcane missiles to prevent that. And three, make sure to not cast arcane barrage with no arcane charges. This season, there are about three procs that you get either from your tier set or your hero talents that give you a beefy arcane barrage that can also refund charges. And if you cast that with no pre-existing charges, you end up losing a lot of damage. Even if barrage generates charges, it is not a generator, but rather a self-serving finisher that takes away the need for you to generate your charges and actually focus on buffing the next barrage instead. Of course, there are a lot more conditions to playing Arcane right that you might want to research, but if you can remember these three things, you will prevent yourself from making a lot of mistakes and makes the spec less scary to get into. Although Spellslinger is the go-to right now, just a few weeks ago Sunfury was the top dog. It's likely these will fluctuate throughout the expansion so you can always play what you like. The arcane builds you can play regardless of hero talents are actually 3 at the moment and you only change 3 talents between them as well. This is the single target build you will use in raids on bosses like Sikran and Kaivisa. You can probably use this everywhere, but most bosses this season are AoE focused. If you want to play a bit of cleave in raids, so basically any boss with adds, you swap Energize Familiar and Consortium Bobble for Arcing Cleave and Resonance. This will give you good add damage without tanking your single target damage too much. And if you want a Mythic Plus build or pure AoE, you change one more talent, Time Loop into Charged Orb or Eureka into Charged Orb. Both are played in the top keys and they both buff your damage in the end. Skill expression can apply to all mage specs, but I feel Arcane ups the ante here a bit since it has way more hard casting spells than the other two mages, so being able to do similar things will be harder. This was the final nail in the coffin called I will main Arcane, since skill expression has always been something beautiful in a game for me. You don't need it to play the spec, but when you can pull off a Frost Nova blink into Polymorph the Fox on the second boss in Mists of Tyrna Scythe, is a sight to behold. Or when you are in combat with a pack in Grim Batol, the boss is patrolling and almost upon you, you max range cast a Frostbolt into instant invisibility to reset the boss and keep your party from having to fight it and the pack with no mana or cooldowns is sweeter than the nectar of a sweet sexy bee in the middle of a hot summer and what? Arcane hasn't given me enough time to touch grass, but that's because the spec is so fun that who needs companionships anymore, right? Like for real, just play Arcane Mage and get more damage in a key and, and you cannot talk about skill expression without altered time. My god, this has to be the coolest ability in the entire game. 
the range of actions you can do with this depending on your planning and creativity is mind-blowing. Although this is my Fire Mage footage on Mythic Ovenex, I am assigned to blast wave the parasites into the boss for AoE grouping and then bursting them down. But the marker I am assigned to is different from the one that sometimes pops on me for egg breaking. So I place an altar time in the position I need to be to blast wave blink twice on my assigned egg to break it, take the damage from the mechanic because who needs healers when I can just alter time back, full HP and blast wave the adds into the boss and then slap. This is but one example. This can be done on the first boss of Siege of Boralus when you get chased. Pop an alter time on one side of the arena, blink once or twice across the room, do a bunch of cool arcane shit, then alter time back, having the boss yo-yo around the middle of the room instead of just chasing you for 5 minutes. At which point there is bound to be a bomb somewhere that you can kite the boss into. Arcane does have its own challenges for sure, but it's one of the few specs that you feel you can always improve at in meaningful ways that have a visible impact on your gameplay. It's a wonder to play this spec and it's not the only one. Unholy Death Knight scratches some hard to reach itches you might have and Marcellian is talking about it right here in our video going over the reasons why Unholy is so fun to play while doing more damage than my Arcane just because.